Hi and welcome to Unit 1, Topic 2, Video 9. In this video we're going to talk about relative velocity, which is a part of that um, application 1, displacement velocity acceleration, um, but it's relative velocity, which is a really, it's a really interesting topic and a bit of a thought topic, something you can spend some time thinking about. So relative velocity is to do with how fast is someone going depending on your speed. So most of the time when we talk about velocity and we do a problem on a piece of paper, we imagine a situation where the velocity is compared to something that is still motionless. But you know that if you see someone walking past you, that then they're going at their speed. But if you see someone walking towards you as you're driving a car towards them, then relative to you, they're actually going really fast. They get from the end of the street to where you are really quickly. So my question is, how fast is someone going if they are on the same train as you? Now, they're on a train going pretty fast, but if you're on the same train as them, it looks like they're not moving. And that's relative velocity. So they're motionless relative to you. How fast is someone going on the same plane? Same thing, they're going very fast. Um, how about now? How fast is the person next to you going? So take a second to think about that. What I mean is that we're currently on Earth, yes, but Earth is travelling around the sun at quite a high speed. But it doesn't look like we're moving fast. So it's all relative velocity. Compared to somebody who's maybe on the sun, then we would look like we're going a lot faster. Please don't go to the sun, though. No. Uh, so velocity has changed depending on perspective. So let's have a look at a quick example. Let's say that I'm swimming across a river from point O to point B. So I'm going to just draw this river out here. And I'll separate it by four lines. And so that gives me O can be here, and then B can be here. And this vector is 4j. Does that make sense? And I'm swimming at a velocity of 2j. So that would mean, if I'm describing it, that means that I would do it in two time units. I would get across the river. So that's pretty easy. If the velocity works. It's going to take me two unit time units. Easy peasy. Now let's say that the river is flowing with the velocity or the flow rate of i. So that means the river is flowing in the positive i direction, this way. And it's flowing at i. So what happens? So the question about what happens, now, and I'll just steal this diagram because it's going to help us. I might as well just use the same diagram. Um, the question about what happens is a really important question because there's now something else in the mix. So let's throw this down here. And that other thing in the mix is a flow rate. So whilst I have clearly defined um, my motion as taking two seconds to get across the river, there and there, in that two seconds, I'm also going to travel one this way, and then I'll do my next second there, and one this way, which will leave me stranded two units down. So instead of being at B, I'll be at C, which is equal to four, um, well, two I in the right order, plus four J. So that's a problem for me. So the extension will be, what should V be to ensure that I land at B? Now my V, my velocity, has to counteract my flow. So that means instead of traveling 2j, what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel 2j plus, um, well, i plus 2j. So i plus 2j will take me to there, but then the flow will take me to here. And then I'll i plus 2j will take me to there. Now let me draw it out better with my overall velocity. It means that i will travel to here and the flow will take me to there. i will travel to here and the flow will take me to there. So v is equal to i plus 2j. And that means that my resultant velocity um, relative to the, um, because in the river I'm traveling at i plus 2j, but from the bank I'm looking at someone who's traveling i plus 2j and the flow rate. So it will be equal to my velocity plus the flow rate. Um, and of course I've defined this badly, it should be negative i because I'm working in a negative direction. So that's equal to negative i plus 2j plus i which gives me my overall 2j, which is my desired velocity. So you can see how that works. So relative velocities. If a train is travelling east at 100 kilometres an hour and a bike is travelling west at 20 kilometres an hour, how fast does the bike appear to be going relative to a passenger on a train? So the passenger on the train is green, 100 kilometres an hour, and the person on the bike is purple, 20 kilometres an hour, a little bit shorter. But to the passenger on the train who feels like they're motionless, the person on the bike is traveling at 120 kilometers per hour west because they 
incorporate the uh, passenger speed and the person's speed. So I'll just write that down here in blue, 120 kilometers per hour west. Okay, now just imagine again, um, for example, and a really good example of this situation is when you're on the motorway driving somewhere and you're overtaking a car or somebody's overtaking you. Now, if you're going 100 kilometers an hour and somebody next to you is going 102 kilometers an hour, well, technically they're only going two kilometers an hour relative to you. And it makes sense because they're going really fast, but actually if you look at them, it looks like they're coming around your car really slowly because that's a relative velocity. So now what if the bike was traveling east? So this time we've got a person traveling 100 kilometers per hour east, and the bike is also traveling 20 kilometers per hour east, um, and that will mean that they're traveling in the same direction, which will perspective-wise slow the bike down. It will look like they're traveling 80 kilometers an hour west because we were easterly. And that makes sense again. So flip that over and have a think about how that works. Now, what if the bike was traveling north? This is a little bit more complex, but not too bad. So we've got the train, which I'll push down here. It's 100. And the bike is 20 north, which means the relative velocity will be the resultant of that. Um, now, I'm going to show you a trick in a minute. Basically, we've been adding this and subtracting that. And so we'll be looking at how we add and subtract that. And to get this, we're going to be doing a little bit of Pythag um, to get the uh, distance. And we can then calculate that angle if we need to. Or if we add the two uh, vectors together, so the two velocity vectors together, it gives us a Cartesian form. It's actually quite easy. So I'll show you that now. To solve relative velocity problems like this, you must set the position of perspective as not moving. So the person on the train and the problems above, they're not moving. To do this, we get the bike's velocity and we subtract the train's velocity. So if the person's not moving, we have to subtract their velocity away from them. And that makes it zero. So we subtract their velocity away from the situation. But we add any other relevant velocities on. So um, if I come back up here, that means that we get the 20 kilometers west, which I'm going to denote in I form as negative 20, and we subtract the 100i, giving us negative 120i, which matches that. And here we get 20 kilometers east, that's how fast the bike is traveling because it's now traveling east, but we still subtract the 100 kilometers, and that's equal to now 80 kilometers west. And here we get 20 kilometers north, which is 20j, we still subtract the 100i, and this is our resultant. Uh, not much I can do with it, but let's put it like this in the right order. So then we get a, that Cartesian form with i and j components, uh, which is really good. It makes it quite easy to deal with relative velocities. If, it, if you want something you can visualize, then probably polar form is better for that. It gives us an overall speed, which is going to be, what, 105 kilometers an hour? And it's going to give us a direction, which in this case is going to be I don't know, 10 or 20 degrees in here. Um, so we've got a bit of an idea. We could work it out as a bearing if we needed to or whatever we need to do. Um, so here's my summary. Let's say that A and B are two moving objects with velocity A equal to VA and velocity B equal to VB. Then the velocity of B relative to A is the velocity of B relative to Earth minus the velocity of A relative to Earth. So Earth becomes that hinge point. And keep in mind that the Earth is moving. So if we start to say relative to the sun or to something else, even the moon, then the game changes. Um, or, of course, the velocity of B relative to Earth is equal to the velocity of B relative to A plus the velocity of A relative to Earth. And I've done, I've chosen some colors here to really indicate to you that I've, all I've done here is rearranged. I've not swapped anything around. I've rearranged because sometimes we want to know the velocity of B relative to Earth because we know a relative velocity, because we can measure. So, for example... Um, a police car can measure your speed while it's driving. So they, they have um, stationary speed cameras, but they also have um, in-car speed cameras. And so that speed camera will measure your speed relative to the police car, and then will subtract the police car's speed. So this is your speed relative to the police car, and will subtract or will add the negative speed because the police car is potentially going in the opposite direction to you. Um, so there's interesting technology there, and that's how this maths breaks into that technology. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. Example five. 
is if A is moving such that the velocity of A equals that and the velocity of B equals this, what is the velocity of A relative to B? Okay, and we won't do this second bit. That's a little bit of an in-class task. But A relative to B, we go A relative to B, I'm looking at this one, and I do the velocity of B, which in this case, now this is B relative to A, but we want A relative to B. So I've flipped it, which was silly of me. But that means I want the velocity of A relative to Earth minus the velocity of B relative to Earth. So the velocity of A relative to B is equal to the velocity of A minus the velocity of B, which is 2i minus 3j minus the velocity of B, which is 5i plus 2j. Put that one in brackets in particular just to make sure I get that right. And it comes out as negative 3i minus j. Oh, no, minus 5j. See, that's why you've got to put it in brackets just to make sure you get it right because I almost didn't. So there's our velocity relative. Um, now, in terms of the diagram, what does this look like? Well, velocity of A is 2 minus 3. So that's 2. So this is, I'm going to call this O. 2 minus 3 is here. And so that is my velocity of A. And velocity of B is 5 plus 2, which is here. This is my velocity of B. So we'll have A and we'll have B comes out there after one time in it because it's a velocity. So that's, I'm kind of denoting position. And, and we want to know the velocity of A relative to B. So if B was stationary, what's happening to A? And we can see if B is stationary, then A moves there every second. And there, and we keep in mind, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it goes 5 down, hence negative 5j. And this is at 5, whereas this is at 2. So it goes 3 back, hence the negative 3i. So you see A relative to B. If this is motion in one second, then um, B is now 5 above A and 3 in front of A, based on their velocities. Um, so that's example 5. And also the last example I've got. Definitely worth having a play around with that. And ask any questions you need to. All the best.